This is going to be lecture three, AutoCAD introduction. Okay, so in this one, we're going to be going over some of our construction tools and our modifying tools. It's going to be a lot of commands in this in this uh, module here, but these are going to be probably one of your most useful commands that you're going to ever use in AutoCAD. So we're going to get into looking at what some offset, divide. We're going to take a look at some projections that we can use our X lines, our construction lines is what they're called, and we're going to use look at what the ray command is. And then we're going to look at some modifying tools that's going to allow us to do some things that, that's going to make life a lot quicker for us. So we're going to have our fillets and chamfers, blends, breaks, joins, trim, extends, stretch, lengthen, scale, and explode commands. So like I said, this is going to be a lot of commands. I do advise you to go and take a look once again into the lecture demos where I have a demo of all of these. Okay, let's first start with the offset command. And once again, this is going to be a super useful command. It's going to let us, allow us to create a distance between two objects. And when we're using the offset command, I can basically make a copy of that object at a certain distance. And you're going to see that in the lecture demos, I have other different ways of you can utilize this command and make some things rather quickly. But well, like I said, this is a very useful command, and we're going to use this one a lot in some of our examples that we're going to, as you're going to see. Okay, the next thing I have is the measure and divide command, and these commands kind of work the same. One is going to do the, they kind of work the same. One except it'll let the computer do one thing for you, and the other one will, you're going to have the option to use it. Like I said, when I'm using the divide command. AutoCAD is going to divide it and, and figure out whatever distance that's going to be. So it's going to split it into it. All I have to do is say, hey, I, w I have this line and I want to divide this line into four segments. So what it's going to do is it's going to create some nodes at different locations and it's going to go ahead and divide that line for me. If I use the measure command, what it's going to do is it's going to have this line and I tell it, hey, what's the distance that I want between them? And it's going to go ahead and put this node which is nothing more than a reference along here and it's going to measure between those points and then it's going to have a remainder if there is a remainder it's going to leave it at the end this one it does it does matter where you pick it on it since it's going to divide it and it's going to give it spaces for you so if I pick along this end you'll notice that the remainder will be at this end if I'd have clicked on this end it'll go in the other end so you're going to see that in the example that I give you okay when you're using the measure and divide command, when you first use them, nothing will appear. And it's typically because your point style is not set up. And I'll show you where that dialog box is in, in the lecture demo. So you'll be able to see these. And I like to always click. You know, this one is probably one of my favorite ones. But I usually pick anything along the bottom. Usually by default, AutoCAD sets it to the, this little point. And that's why you can't see anything. It's actually putting those little points there but you don't see it showing up. So you make sure that you have to go and change the point style. Okay, the next thing I wanna do is AutoCAD is really big in projections. So when you're creating certain objects, you wanna make sure that you're creating them correctly according to whatever standard that you're using. And what I mean by standard is, is that in different industries, we use different standards. So for example, for in America, we use the third angle projection which is super important for you to know is that we're going to use a third angle projection most of the rest of the world or the international standard is going to be the first angle projection the way this is going to work is that you're going to have an object and for example I'll take this side and we're going to actually look at it this way so if I'm looking at an object from one side and I look at it that way it's going to show me that view of it and we're going to create some of these as we get to projections and I think that's going to be in your fourth or fifth module that we're going to look at some projections and how to create these. And we're going to be using this third angle projection. One thing I want to say that's super important is do remember how these little symbols look. Always when you're using a third angle projection, you have these two circles. This little small line, it kind of looks like a little eye pointing look to it. No matter which way that direction goes, that's going to always be our third angle projection. If it's first angle projection, it's going to be this line that's going to always be closest to these double circles. So it's going to be the longer line that's going to always be closer to it. And it kind of makes sense to you once you start getting into projections what those actually mean. 
So if you're looking at both of these shapes, you'll see that you have a first angle projection, which is over here on this side, and this basically is the opposite of what the third angle projection. In my opinion, the first angle makes sense to me, and it probably will make sense to you, but the, the first angle is what most people use. But like I said before, most important thing is that in the United States, we use the third angle projection. Okay? When we're creating projections, you're going to see that we're going to use this X line, which is short for it's a construction line, or you can use a ray. They work absolutely the same, except for the X line will go from infinity to infinity, and the ray command is going to go from one point to infinity. Now, also remember that these two objects, once you create them on your screen, they're not there as references. They're actually part of your drawing. So you can trim and modify these lines. Nodes, you can't. They're just there as reference points, and you, you don't have any control over them other than to delete them. But when you're using the X line or the construction lines or the rays, they are actually part of your drawing. Okay, chamfers and fillets. Now, if you think about a fillet, and most people will call it a fillet, but it's actually called a fillet. The fillet command is going to give you your fillets and rounds. So basically, you're going to go in and control the angle of it and say, hey, I, not the angle, sorry, the radius. You're going to go in and tell it what radius you have. And then you're going to say, okay, fine, that's the way I'm going to create my fillets. The chamfer is going to make the sharp corners. And you're going to have to define that either by using some lengths and the angle or just using two lengths. Okay. Once again, look at the lecture demos, and I go in specifically on how to do both of those. And it should be very important, and these are going to be a useful command for you, especially the fillet command. The blend command is one of these commands that I don't use a lot of. But what it does is that if you have two lines, it'll construct whatever kind of spline in between them two. So, for example, these two dark lines here on my black lines are going to be the lines that I create. And I want to just kind of figure out a blend and it really doesn't matter what's between them. It'll go ahead and blend and create a spline in between them. And once again, these two lines, it'll create a spline. And two parallel lines, it'll also create a spline. Okay. Our break and join command, they kind of work opposite of each other, I guess. But if I want to break an object, basically what I'm doing is I'm just putting a gap in it. So I can break a line, or I can break any kind of object that I want, rectangles, circles, and I'll go into that in your lecture demos. But if I have two lines and I want to bring them back together, and this typically only works with lines, and the true, the most important thing about joining things is they have to be two collinear lines. So if the lines are collinear, which means that they're basically on the same plane, I can join them back together. Now circles, I can't join them once I break them, or rectangles, or polygons, or anything of that nature. Typically, join will work if I have lines. I'm going to also use the join to get the join command later on, and it's going to wind up creating a polyline. So if I have some lines that's all connected that are individual, if I join those lines together, it's going to make them into a polyline. Our trim and extend is going to be really, really super useful. Our trim command is going to basically cut objects away between two points, and our extend is going to grow to a line. The most important part of using this are you do not have to select that, that, that cutting line or that boundary line if you don't want to. You're going to see that I'm going to use the enter button and I'm just going to bypass it. Or, uh, or I'll just bypass it and go. Or I, sometimes I do select them depending on how many objects I do have on the drawing. Uh, another thing about these two commands that if you're going to find out if you're in one, you're also in the other one. And like again, I say in the demo, I'm going to show you how you can do that that if I'm in this command, I can be in this one. And if I'm in this one, I'm also in this one. And it's going to be as simple as just holding down the shift button. Okay, the stretch command probably is one of the most difficult ones for most students to learn, mainly because you have to use a crossing window or a crossing polygon. And that's going to be that green dotted line one. So remember back when we discussed what uh, crossing windows are and uh, crossing polygons, you have to use a crossing polygon to use this and once again in the stretch command you're gonna see me use that in the lecture demos of how I create and I'm able to pull certain objects and stretch the lengthen command is a very useful command but most people don't use it 
And when I use this command, you can do all kinds of things. You can, you can lengthen, and just because it says lengthen, you can also shrink an object. So basically, it's an it's a alternate, like it says here, to trimming and then extending. But I have a little bit more control with the lengthen command. I can give it a total length if I want to and say, hey, make that line this distance. So you'll see that when we use the lengthen command, it's a really super useful command to use. The scale command is basically a command that's going to allow you to make things bigger or smaller, depending on where base point you got it at. So I can either make something bigger, smaller, I can also keep it. So I may be able to make a copy of that. It's a very good command if you know the kind of scale factor that you want. And I, I'm sure I go into what the reference is, if you can use a reference. So I don't have to know exactly dimensions of what it is. I can make it copy something else on the screen if I want to do that as well. And the, lastly, the explode command. The explode command, what it does is usually takes it one level down. What I'm meaning by that is if I create an object that's a polyline, let's say I take a rectangle and I explode that rectangle. Instead of making it now, it's not one object. It's going to be four separate lines. And I'll show you what that does in the lecture demos as well.